Real talk, I don't even wanna wipe my ass with it. Like, I feel like I deserve better. If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be the continuation of this series that I'm doing after reading over 400 books since I started booktube about four years ago, a little less. I think we're celebrating like 1st of August or something. So it's coming very soon. And in order to do that, I wanted to be able to do the best of the best, the worst of the worst, which is today. And I also did already, I'll link it down below, uh, the best of each category that isn't my main genre. Uh, this is probably the video that a lot of you are waiting for the most because for some reason you really like when I'm being very harsh and bitter. So some of these books might not be objectively the worst ones, but they're the ones that I enjoy reviewing badly the most. So, I mean, they're all like one or two stars, so technically they're all pretty bad. <laughs> I wanted to do a top 10, so I'm doing a top nine because as always, I could not choose one more. Uh, it's just because some books I couldn't finish, uh, either because there was too much incest or they were just the weirdest books I've ever read. And some of them were just bad, but they're not necessarily fun to review. So I just couldn't decide on the number 10, so we're doing nine. I believe this was like one of the first, if not the first book that I read on a book tube. I read the first month, that's what matters. Uh, I was incredibly excited. I knew nothing about this. It was considered, you know, Harry Potter number eight. Uh, personally, right now, I'm just not considering this part of the universe. It just doesn't exist. I blocked it out. Uh, I remember reading this and being so disappointed. I kept hearing people saying like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And this sucks. I haven't seen the play. So obviously, this might be easier to deal with watching it than reading it. But the only redeeming quality is Scorpio, I think. Um, it was the only good thing in here. The rest sucked. Uh, the plot holes, the characters were so out of characters. I hated Ron and Armani. I actually even hated Harry. Uh, so absolutely terrible. I don't think I really need to say much more about this. We all know this sucks. So um, obviously one of the worst books that I've read ever, let alone in the last four years. You're gonna see some patterns in here. Uh, some books like I was just very excited to read them and they ended up just not living up to my expectations at all. Some of these are just like very easy, like it's so easy to pinpoint exactly my issues because sometimes I feel like some books you're just, oh, I'm not vibing with it for whatever reason. I can't necessarily tell you why. Some of these it's very, very obvious. But uh, the next one is another one of those that was, you know, popular. I was excited to read them and ended up being incredibly disappointed. Um, the Gunslinger by Stephen King. I was so excited to read this book because it is so incredibly popular. I thought this was going to be five stars and why do people like this? Like, I'm genuinely wondering. Um, I feel like sometimes, you know, I, I don't really like a book for whatever reason, but I can understand why people like it. I have no freaking clue. And I know that when I reviewed it, was it in 2017? People were like, oh, you need to read the rest of the series and everything makes sense. You're gonna look back and give it five stars. <laughs> No, <laughs> I have yet to continue the series. I've been saying for years that I was going to. I just can't bring myself to do it because this was so bad. Uh, actually, even Stephen King mentions that this is like one of his worst books. The writing is just so over the top. Um, I know that some of it might be due to the fact that the main character is like in desert and like, you know, the A is the heat is getting to him or something, but it just made no sense. You're reading it and you're so confused and then things start making sense a little bit and no, 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 it, you get confused all over again. Um, just a waste of time. I am guaranteeing that most people would have hated this too if Stephen King wasn't written on the cover. Like, I don't get it. Maybe things do get better in the next couple books, but this on its own sucked. Let's go to one of the books that I just really love bashing because let's be real, that's what you're waiting for. Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. You were waiting for that one, just say it. If you haven't seen it, I will link down below. I did a video where I was reading a bunch of five-star reviews of books that I gave one or two stars to. This was in there, it, it got <laughs> a little bit, became a little bit of a shit show, just gonna say it. Uh, but this was genuinely terrible. In my opinion, this is supposed to be an adult contemporary romance. Um, this would have made a very good thriller because it's supposed to be romantic, but no. You're following Lincoln. Lincoln is described in the beginning as being kind of awkward. He lives with his mom, she's still making his lunches, and he's an IT guy, and he's supposed to just warn people whenever their emails are flagged because they're talking about other stuff than work, you know, to just focus on work. And uh, Lincoln decides to read the emails between these two women, and he falls in love with one of them without meeting her. Of course. Throughout the book, though, you learn that, turns out that Lincoln is like, 
really hot, really muscular, it has multiple degrees, and he's supposed to be like all, you know, desirable. And he shows up to, I don't remember which one it is, there's those two girls. He just stalks her to meet her, and she's perfectly okay with the whole thing, which like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> like, don't tell me this doesn't sound like a really, really creepy trailer, because to me it totally does. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the movie The Passenger. Like, you know, if it had been directed by a woman, it would have been totally a thriller. So, um, why? Why? And I was reading those reviews in that video and someone was saying how they wish they could have their own stalker, which I worry about you. Um, no, absolutely not. Honestly though, I just didn't really enjoy myself reading it. It's a pretty quick read, obviously, but like, I just really hate <laughs> the whole like, ooh, turns out he's hot, so it's okay that he's a fucking creep. So, I mean, it's been a few years. I did tell myself I was going to keep the book because I'm a very petty person and I just wanted to be able to continue hating on it. But I think it's time for me to let it go. In my next unhaul video, you will see it in here because at this point, like, why am I doing this to myself? I hate this book, like, I genuinely don't like it. Uh, I'm sure some people read it and they just, you know, nothing really bugs them about it. But personally, this is just a big pet peeve of mine. So I'm already not big on romance, let's be real. But like when this kind of stuff is promoted, I just, Nah. The Unbecoming of Mary Dyer. This is the perfect example of <laughs> the books that I love to talk about, even though like it's a quick read, like it's a pretty thick YA uh, paranormal kind of book. So it wasn't horrible to read, but it has so many of the stereotypes that I really hate about YA books that it's just fun to talk about it. Once again, it was part of that video where I was reading like five star reviews of you know, books that I didn't care about. And I had so much fun. Like, I will need to insert some clips because you need to see that. I was reading a quote, actually. Let me show you that because... <laughs> In my rush, I hadn't tied my shoelace. Noah was now tying them for me. He looked up at me through his dark fringe of lashes and smiled. The expression on his face melted me completely. I knew I had the goofiest grin plaster on my lips and I didn't care. There, he said as he finished tying the lace of my left shoes. Now you won't fall. Too late. Completely fall in love with him. <laughs> I can't deal. You really get to see how my brain works in that clip. Like that's genuinely how I feel. I just cringe so hard in like romantic stuff. I was especially mad about this book because in the beginning I was really intrigued. This girl, Mara Dyer, uh, is like doing this whole like Ouija board thing with her friends. They die and like she's being, you know, paranormal stuff happens to her. So I was genuinely excited because I don't read like ever books that are paranormal but it's something I want to be into, even though, you know, I don't really look for it. So I thought this was going to be fun and turns out it just becomes so no. She goes to a new school and obviously the hottest guy on the market decides that he's totally into her instant connection and he's hot, he has an accent and obviously turns out he's super rich too because yes, please. He's totally normal because he quotes Lolita to her, which obviously something that would turn on every teenage girl. And uh, there's the fact also that she gets basically attacked by her Spanish teacher and she gets her revenge eventually by basically becoming bilingual overnight, which <laughs> that's like so like fantasy in the head of a teenager. And it just gets weird towards the end. Obviously like little spoilers throughout the video, I'm trying to keep it, you know, as little as possible, but it becomes this weird thing about her brother being kidnapped, I think. And it just, it, it just makes no sense. It becomes too big instead of like trying to contain it. I feel like the book would have been better if it had been edited a little bit better. Obviously I haven't continued, it's a trilogy, but uh, you just get a tiny bit of the paranormal stuff that makes you want to continue. Like I'm assuming their connection is probably due to something, like it breeds that way. So that's the only reason I've been thinking about possibly continuing that and my friend I had the second book, which I own now, uh, but I, I haven't. It probably won't happen ever, but yeah. It's just one of those books that I feel like you can hate read very easily. Ooh, there's also the fact that uh, instantly the hot girl and her just decides that they can't stand each other because again, of course, it's just the classic stereotypes. It just, just all of those issues throughout the book. Objectively, is it the absolutely worst book that I've read? Probably not, but it's just so bad though. <laughs> it's just too fun to talk about it. So I wanted to at least include one book that I couldn't finish because it was too terrible. And I chose Warcross because <laughs> why? Um, in this one, it's supposed to be like the uh, Ready Player One of like why, like girly version. And I mean, Ready Player One was already 
kind of cringy so I wasn't having like very high expectations for this one. My issues is that you get the main character who is like incredibly plain but to make her a little bit more special it turns out she has rainbow hair which again obviously. My issue is that it was pretty boring to be honest slash I could not stop cringing at the actual romance that was starting it was just it made absolutely no sense that she would fall in love with the dude that created this Warcross world thingy video game thing. Uh, makes sense, but for him to be into her, it just made me cringe. Like, I got to that point and I just completely gave up on the book. Uh, but I had already started cringing because two things. First off, bear with me, I feel like I don't remember exactly the details because it's been a while and I don't own the book. But I believe she's known for like being like a bad girl. I think she might have like a uh, criminal record or something. Uh, because she did a bad thing, but turns out she did it for a good reason. So she's like a fake bad person. The main thing I had issues with is the fact that she's like a hacker. But the way it's explained in the book, I just cannot deal with it. She's basically staring at the screen and like unfocusing unfo her eyes and things just pop. I don't know if there's like an explanation later on in the book or series, but like, how am I supposed to take it seriously? I used to try that stuff, you know, with the books, like the Garfield books or something. I, come on, this is nah. Another one of my biggest pet peeves is when things are not explained. Example. Run by Blake Crouch, which I have a very complicated relationship with Blake Crouch. I love his newest stuff like Dark Matter, Recursion, fantastic books, highly recommend them. There's also the Wayward Pine series, which is gonna be a little bit more hit and miss, but I overall enjoyed it. There's a TV show also that is good. Um, but when I went to read his older stuff, I struggled really hard. I have like one more, I have Abandoned left. Uh, I did read also bad behavior, good behavior, didn't really care for it either. But this was the worst one for a couple of reasons. First off, <laughs> let me tell you what it is about. Uh, there's this thing that happens in the sky and people that see it, kind of like Aurora Borealis, and uh, people that see it kind of just go crazy. And um, <laughs> throughout the book, he followed his family trying to escape to Canada where we apparently didn't see it and uh, people are basically trying to kill them. The story was so, so, it definitely keeps you on edge, which is something that he's really good at. The characters are just not great. That's part of his weaknesses, but I really wanted to include it in here because it represents a lot of my issues. When things are not explained at the end, obviously spoiler, but you get to the end and things just magically resolve themselves and you just never explain why it happened. And like, I don't know about you, but like, if I read your damn book, I want a damn explanation. Like, I don't care if it's freaking aliens or if it's freaking like whatever magical thing that happened, explain it to me. If I have to imagine the possibility, I will just assume that you suck as an author. Like, I want to know that. Did I read this in 2017 or 18? Uh, it's been a while, clearly, and I'm still very mad about it. I just hate getting to the end and not having an answer. So if you feel the same, let me know because there are a few books, but this was definitely the worst one. Oh, there's also the fact that the kids in the book, I was literally waiting for them to die. Like I was hoping they were going to die painfully, which is just not great. Another book that represents some of my issues with books is Altered Carbon by Richard Morgan. I wanted to read the book because I wanted to watch the TV show, but you know, gotta read the book first, right? And I was very excited. I heard like it was about like clones or whatever. I think they're called sleeves in the book. You get the idea, basically people can switch body if you have enough money and then people that can't, you know, whatever. And you're following this dude that has to investigate a murder where, you know, the husband was killed, but he's rich. So, you know, switch bodies, so it's not a big deal. But my issue is I hate when books are overly sexual for no reason. This is supposed to be like hard sci-fi. It was supposed to be like detective work and it's just weirdly sexual. Like it literally feels like a 15 year old that was very, very horny decided to just write a book. You follow this dude trying to investigate and like literally in the beginning of the book, he tells you twice that he's staring at the boobs of the wife that was, you know, her husband was murdered and uh, he's telling you about his dick getting hard. Twice. In like three, five pages. What the And like people were trying to justify in my comment section on like Goodreads being like, oh, you know, like a lot of hormones when you, you know, get into a new sleeve. I don't care. Like, I literally do not care. And apparently her, she has this thing that makes him go crazy too. I still don't care. Like, I do not need to know about his especially within the first like 30 pages of the book. I just don't need to. Especially if you're gonna be told, like again, I read the first hundred and something pages. So like all of this shit happens super quickly. Uh, you're told that he goes back to his hotel room. He's like half-ass masturbating. What does this 
bring to the story, nothing. Plus at one point he literally describes boobs as elusive globes, which, really? I didn't have to book, you know, did not finish it. I put it down uh, at a hundred and something pages when there's this awkward sex scene, which apparently not necessarily consensual because again, she has that thing. I just didn't care at this point. Like, I feel like if you're gonna feel the need to like overly sexualize your book, it makes me feel like you don't have enough good content. So I just uh, never actually watched a show, which <laughs> probably never will. I didn't really wanna include books that I've read this year because you know, I didn't wanna spoil anything, but I've already talked about how bad this thing is. Technically, this isn't the worst book that I've read, but it's definitely the most disappointing slash it, it works for the worst just because I did have decently high hopes, although this is the second book in the uh, companion series of uh, His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. And I wanted to include it here because I hate whenever you love an author and they just completely ruin it for you. <laughs> it starts pretty good because you're finally following Lyra as an adult and I have been dying my whole life to get this, this stuff. Like I just, been, I've been wanting that. And, um. I was a little heartbroken in the beginning because Pan and her, they just don't get along, they're fighting and you're just really wanting to uh, see them, you know, get along, be friends again. And um, there are just so many awkward things. First of all, the story is going absolutely nowhere. This is a huge book, but it took me three months to read it because I was so bored. And uh, there's a completely unnecessary attempted rape scene, which is not something I expected from this author because once again, his Dark Materials is amazing and this just took me by surprise in a really bad way. And there's this like romance between Lyra and this older dude, which he's in his 20s or something. And like, honestly, I think he's like eight years older than her or something. And why are we told that he was into her when she was like 14, 15? Like, this is awkward as fuck. So I'm just genuinely mad that this book exists and um, I will read a third book because I kind of hate myself and I just want to know if, you know, something redeemable can happen still in this series because the first book was a disappointment. This is truly just terrible. And uh, yeah, clearly I want to continue this. Anyone curious, do not read this series if you love is Dark Materials. It's just not worth it. Last book I wanted to talk about is Dune. Dune is another book that if it wasn't this popular, I would have never finished it. I am definitely a sci-fi lover. I've been wanting to try and read a lot of the classic ones. And this, I, I mean, I got this gorgeous edition. So you know I really wanted to love it. And I, I mean, even more, when I couldn't bear to continue the physical book, I got the audiobook trying to just push through and go through it. And I hated every second of it. Um, I know some people feel the same. I know some people are scandalized, but I know a lot of people are like, relief to hear that they weren't alone feeling like this like there's no way like you would have given me that book without you know telling me what it is i would have just dnf'd it after like 10 pages it generally could not just compel me to read it it was just terrible incredibly boring the descriptions were just long and boring dialogues were boring everything was boring and um i know <laughs> it's one of my reviews on goodreads that got the most Fun comment section, I did have to block some people because things were getting very messy. I still need to do that video where I read some of those comments to talk about some topics that are important to me. Um, but <laughs> apparently my pea-sized brain as a woman failed me here and I just can't comprehend how much of a masterpiece this is. Um, <laughs> in this world, actually, women are supposed to be the ones that have magical powers, which I thought was really progressive for, you know, an older book like this. I feel like there's usually always some sexism in like older classic sci-fis. And uh, no, it turns out that the main character is called Paul and he's basically a prophet. I've been calling him white Jesus. Um, and I have made the mistake of saying, you know, that of course he's going to be the strongest of them all because he has a magical piece. Because I really hated how I felt like bait and switch. Because again, the whole like, oh, women are the ones with magical powers. And then no, this random dude is going to be the most powerful of them all. And uh, I just, I didn't like the pacing. I didn't like the story. I didn't care about any of it, to be honest. And it's again, a very, 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 very big book. It's, it takes forever to go through it. I know some people like it. So obviously there must be something in it. I just failed to see any of it. <laughs> I know there's a movie that was supposed to come out later this year. I don't know what's going on with it, but I will most likely watch it because I feel like I went through this book, but like not a lot stuck with me. <laughs> so this was a generally terrible video reviewing the worst of the worst that I've read in the last four years. I feel like 
these are more like representations of, you know, the ideas that I really don't care about. Uh, feel free to comment in the comment section if there are any books that you think don't deserve to be here or you think some other ones should have been here or just you overall agree or disagree because it's always fun to discuss this as adults. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe because you definitely don't want to miss the best of the best coming up very soon. And I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I shall see you in my next one very soon. Bye.